Dreams be dreams right. I love the idea of making an album about me so my son can learn some things about his mother that he didn't know. But here's the problem. I have absolutely no idea where to begin. Glittergirl, can you help Dreams Be Dreams present her perfect persona? Of course I can. When you start to scrapbook about yourself, there are plenty of different options you can go with. For example, you might start with your childhood photos and just start going back and writing down what you remember about different things from your youth. And it might be a little bit different than the way you scrapbook now because um, from childhood you may just have the odd photo here or there and things you do remember and things you don't and a lot of single photo um, occasions unlike what we tend to have today when we take plenty of photos because we're um, dealing with digital images instead of film. So um, that's one way to look at it and to go through different things from your childhood and, and retell those stories and don't worry too much about the quality of the photos, more um, thinking about what was important to you. But there are other aspects that you can put in a book of me. There are lots of different things you could write about from an adult perspective looking back. The things that we see that um, when they happened, they weren't very important, but when we put them in, in perspective and look back, we can be quite reflective and see that they were in, important elements. Things like, um, did your first job make some sort of impression on the rest of your life and, and things that you can see now that you didn't see at the time? And another thing to keep in mind is that if you're going to tell stories from a year's past or thinking back about those, those things, you may want to really simplify your visual style so that you have plenty of room for writing. But today we're going to look at a few different things and two layouts from start to finish. This one is starting with a childhood photo. I had these pictures from my junior prom that I'd never scrapbooked and there's a really funny story behind them. So I took the color choice of the turquoise from both the prom decorations and my dress and pulled together an arrangement of supplies that included the turquoise plus some yellow and gray and I just pulled all sorts of different papers and embellishments to put together um, and some of them I'll use, some of them may not go in the final um, in the final layout, but I'm just going to take that one um, strip of photos and leave it as a strip of three uh, wallet size pictures. And here's a look at all the supplies that I've pulled out to use for this page. Just wanted to show you why I chose um, the background paper for this layout. And originally I thought about choosing this one with the turquoise in the background. Both of the papers are from Cosmo Cricut. This one's from T for Two, which is a more floral country line. But I don't think that this is the right feel. It seems too rustic and, um, and it's also not going to be very good for writing on. But this print, it, this one's from 23. It's a lot more subtle. It's a lighter color and it just seems um, a lot better in tone for what I want to tell. Um, the Floral might be great for a tea party, a picnic, something that's outdoors, um, but the, the more typographical ivory paper seem the better choice here. Also, I'm fully aware that the text is upside down, um, but I decided I liked it better this way, where the number in the top corner is the right way up, but the text that's really subtle and in the background is upside down, and I think that way it doesn't become part of the design. I don't like it in the other direction, um, and so you can use this paper in any way, obviously, but um, my preference was to have the subtle text upside down so that it's just there more as a texture instead of something that you should read. To start, I just wanted to add a little bit more depth to that background, so I used two colors, a gray and a black, that's the pinstripe and inky black in the Mr. Hueys, to just put a diagonal line of dots. And most of this is going to get covered up, um, because I'm going to work across the top and down the side of this layout. But I just wanted to give that little bit more um, distress to the, the background. So um, now I'm going to start adding the papers over the top, and that gives me a bit more direction across the diagonal. And then all of that empty space in the bottom right-hand corner is where my journaling is going to live. So I'm going to start with using that idea of a, the, um, the horizontal block of photos. And so I've cut some paper to match that horizontal feel. So I'm going to start with the turquoise and then add um, the transparency and the photos on top. And that creates one line of purpose to the page. So that top horizontal section is all about the photos. Then as I add the other elements down the side and across the rest of the page, each part of the page will serve its own purpose.
With the transparency, I want to make sure that I put my adhesive in the spot where it's going to be covered by the photos. I use the same adhesive that I use on paper. It's just um, hiding it in a spot where it'll be covered up so um, it doesn't show through the clear part of the transparency. Now this piece is cut from the Cosmo Cricut 23 piece and then I've just um, cut a little bit off the bottom. But I really liked how on the edge here you get both the three boxes and that um, strip down the side. So I've left that all intact and that's going to create my vertical line. That's going to give me a place for both some embellishment and my title. Then with those three layers in place, I can put the photos over the top and start to build my page down into the bottom corner and then my uh, journaling in the right hand space. In terms of embellishments, I just grabbed a whole bunch of different um, die cuts and stickers and chipboard pieces that had turquoise and yellow or something that seemed like it would go. And in some cases, I'm just going to layer them up. So the cupcake in the middle of this die cut, I wasn't particularly fond of for this layout, but I liked that turquoise and white um, border around the edge. So I can add the other die cut in the center and that has a turquoise um, pattern with a camera. And I can put that on pop dots and create this kind of layer of have something that's a little bit more like what you would buy in a pre-made sticker pack but just made from different die cuts and I can add something to the top um, a little bit later when I find what will match. So then I'm going to just start building up these different embellishments along that vertical line below the photo and um, some of these are older die cuts from uh, the House of Three uh, collection for Pink Paisley and then there's some My Mind's Eye chipboard and some Amy Tangerine uh, stickers and die cuts in there too. So I'm just gonna start mixing these around until I can um, fill in all the gaps and I'm just gonna layer on quite a few little embellishments here, just pulling out all sorts of things that have either yellow or turquoise and seem to work in some way. By the way, with these little stickers like this, they come on a sheet like this, which then makes it hard to um, move them around because you've got the whole sheet. But you can take um, just a little piece, just cut apart a piece of the background and then you can cover up the adhesive and move it around on your layout. It's really, really simple and you've probably done it already, but if you haven't thought of it, it may save you a little bit of a headache trying to move your stickers around until you get them in just the spot that you want. Just adding lots of little embellishments up there at the top um, to fill every little nook and cranny, all the little um, gaps are filled with buttons and scraps of paper. And then below that, I'm going to add the title. I'm gonna spell it in reverse so that I can get the spacing right um, because that first word's going to be quite short, so I wanted it to end in the right place. I don't have any um, reason that it's gonna fall off the the left hand side of the page because it's only short. So um, I'm using some small letter stickers from um, My Mind's Eye and the larger thickers in a whitewash. Now what I wanted to do here was add a little bit of embellishment to the right of the photo up at the top, but not a lot, just a little bit, and I wanted to repeat the same elements that um, exist in that, uh, that heavier cluster there. So I've added some washi tape, some buttons, and um, a little bit of baker's twine. And I wanted to show you how I added the little curls in the baker's twine. Now I just cut um, a length that's about the right size and it, you can cut it um, shorter later if you need to, if there ends up with extra. And one way you can do this if you want to make an intricate shape is to just cut it and then um, use spray adhesive. But in this case, I'm going to use my dot roller and I only need a little bit. So if I need just a tiny bit, I can place the string right on the roller. But in this case, I want a little bit more, so I'm gonna use the sticky, um, the paper that goes on the back of something sticky. So this is the back of that chipboard piece. So it's a, a release paper. And I'm just going to lay the baker's twine over the top and run my adhesive right over the top. And that means that I um, can get the the little dots of the adhesive on the twine without getting a huge mess on my table. You could also use a craft sheet or anything else that the adhesive will just roll right off. Now, because the twine has been kept on a roll, it's really easy to get it to loop into little circles. So you just kind of roll it between your fingers and it will um, go into natural little loops. And then you can start to press them down on your page and just take, um, take the string further along the loop and it will naturally go into these little shapes. And then wherever you need it to stick, you, if you need a little bit more glue, you can always just 
tap it to the edge of the roller and it takes barely any glue at all. The best part about this is if it all goes wrong, there's hardly any glue on your layouts. You can just pull that string up, it's not gonna leave anything behind, and you can go back to easy things like straight lines and holding the edges in with a stapler. And so it's just a different thing to try. And one last little bit is that I tend to add a few more dots to go back to that, that edge when I've cut it off the end of the roll and just place the edge of the twine where I want it to stay. And that pretty much should hold things in place. If it starts to move, you can always add something over the top like a sticky gem or a thicker or anything like that that will just add a little bit more embellishment to the top but also give you a little bit more adhesive. So here's this page all finished and there's a lot going on here. There's a lot I wanted to write. And in truth, I actually found as I was writing that I was remembering a few more things that didn't even fit here. So I might go back and add some more journaling in a pocket or in a, a smaller page, like a six by 12 page protector. But um, lots of embellishment, but also lots of writing and um, something with a, a childhood photo. So I know that will work for some people for their own book of me, but if you scrap yourself and you want to use something that's a bit more current and perhaps something that has a little bit plainer style or simpler journaling or just less journaling then I have a second idea for you today. For this type of page it's what I call a right now page and you'll need a current photo and then whatever supplies you're really liking at the moment because everything is going to be just about what's happening in your life right now. So I have a current picture and then I've picked up the 9 to 5 collection from October afternoon. Now this collection has kind of a retro office feel. It has all sorts of things like typewriters and labels and even um, secretaries at a desk and so it might at first seem like a collection that would be really difficult to use unless you happen to be a secretary and wanted to scrapbook about that. But I promise there's a lot to be done with this collection that's outside of that retro office feel. So just wanted to show you what these papers look like. And there's all sorts of different um, motifs and colors here. So there are different things that we've come to expect from October afternoon, like stripes and plaids. There's also some um, typewriter inspired things, some illustration type designs. There's a ledger paper. This is really rich wood grain and this gorgeous floral and um, all different things um, that come together as this collection with a lot of aqua. Now this floral definitely doesn't have to be an office print. It's called Coffee Break and the back has this black and cream print that's really nice as well. And um, then this is the office or the, um, the wood grain and it has this retro bit on the back. So definitely not um, just for office layouts. This ledger paper is great to write on. Um, and then I'll show you the B-sides. October Afternoon always has great usable B-sides. So there's some diagonal prints, some chevron, and a lot of polka dots. And then we've got some houndstooth, some argyle, some text. And that red one kind of looks like ties, but it could be just some sort of abstract shape, um, anything you wanted the red and cream in. And then that type print, uh, a floral, and another houndstooth. So definitely doesn't have to just be office stuff. And I'm going to use this for my right now page, which is something I normally make around my birthday because I try to make one every year. I'm going to start with that lovely floral and the wood grain. I'm going to use this green and cream diagonal stripe print and the orange and cream polka dots. And I'm going to use the ledger for my journaling. So I'm, I'll am i put the rest aside for the moment, but I'm going to use these as all my papers. So um, I'm going to put these to work and I promise it won't be office themed at all. This time I wanted to start with a much simpler design. So I'm still using that same idea of a horizontal line and a vertical line. And, um, but this time I'm going to put the journaling at the bottom left on those lines. And I've just kept things in much cleaner boxes. I'm not going to have that giant grouping of all sorts of different pieces. Um, uh, I think I'll add a little bit of embellishment to the bottom left and the top, top right, but I'm gonna keep that bottom right corner just plain and simple just to let that wood grain show. So one four by six photo and then the writing and your writing can be in any style for a layout like this. You just want it to be about things that are current to you right now. So that might be just a list of your favorite things. It might be the things that you're using your, um, that are taking up your time right now and um, anything you want to do. Then for the title stickers, I didn't have any that would match that orange. So I used the Heidi Swap Color Magic stickers, which you can make into any color you want. And I just went along to the border so that I wasn't wasting any stickers and tried some different orange ink pads. And this one, the dried marigold, seemed to be um, the best match to the orange in 
the pattern papers. So I'm just going to pull the different letter stickers that I want so that I can ink them. And you can do this on a craft sheet or I'm just going to use a bit of plastic packaging so that I can add the ink to the letters without getting them on all the other letters on the sheet. And um, just take the boxes for the letters that you want and it will start looking like they're just white blocks. But when you sponge the ink over the top, then the letter comes up in a um, in an embossed um, resist ink. So the letter will be white and the rest of the block will be the color that you're using. So I'm just using um, the foam uh, tool to add the ink, but you can use any sort of sponge or even the ink pad itself as long as it's not too wet of an ink pad. And you just layer the ink over the top and the letter will start to show through. Now in the first case, the first layer will come up a bit pale, but you can just keep adding more and more color until you get the dark, um, the amount of darkness or the, the shade that you want. So just keep rubbing the ink over the top and magically those letters will start to show up. Then you can customize the letters to absolutely any color you want. I showed this a couple weeks ago with a mist instead of an ink. And it works with mist as well, but I find the colors are more vibrant with the ink because it's not as wet, so you're not, um, you're not getting the mist in between the layers of the sticker. To finish, I want to keep the embellishment quite simple, but I wanted to start in this bottom corner and then I'm going to repeat something um, there in the top right. So I found this chipboard frame, which is a uh, slightly older embellishment from the Stella Rose collection by My Mind's Eye. And I liked how it looked over the layers of paper and then I just added uh, a little bit of green and orange washi tape. The orange is, uh, is gone now, it's from the first Amy Tangerine collection, it's all sold out, but the green is current and that's Bella Boulevard. So just um, overlapped those two and then put the frame on top and I've put the frame going right off the edge so I can turn the layout over and cut off the extra of the frame and then that's what's going to let me repeat that same embellishment up at the top right corner of the layout. So I'm just using my scissors to, um, to cut that off. And then I'll add um, a little bit of brown ink to all those new edges that I've just exposed to make it match the rest of the frame. Then I wanted to um, be able to add something on top of that frame and I'm using that same punch that I used last week. It's called the embroidery punch and I've only had it a couple weeks but I'm really liking the design. It has all these different bits and pieces that look lovely when it's layered. So I've just added a pop dot to the back so that it'll work over the top of the chipboard and I've used um, that same paper that's in the horizontal strip up the top to punch that. And then added a badge on top, which is from Studio Calico in the um, Abroad collection. And they're kind of sort of travel themed, but they can work for other things too. Um, because there's some maps and uh, one that says, what a wonderful world and things like that. This one's just striped. And then I'm gonna repeat that same thing. So I've cut another one um, with the same punch, same paper, and I'm gonna put a different badge on the top of that one. And then I can just repeat all of that same stuff and the tape, the frame, and the punch piece up there in the bottom or in the top right corner. Um, but this time I want it to come up off the top edge. So instead of the tape going on the horizontal, I'm going to put the tape on the vertical so that I'm taking that whole embellishment and moving it to the other direction. So just line this up. And one thing I love about washi tape is if you don't get it quite straight in the, the right line that you want, then you can just pull it off and um, try again. And in fact, I've just realized that in the other embellishment, I put the green tape down first. So I'll pull that orange tape off, I'll add the green tape, and then I can put the orange over the top of that. Now, other pit tapes that aren't washi tape, they tend, like the ones that are um, quite clear and, and more like a patterned adhesive tape, and um, those if you try to pull them off the layout, you normally get the paper coming with the tape. But the washi adhesive, um, it tends to release really easily. So I'll just attach the two tape layers and then repeat the other steps. That part of a frame, just right up on the edge of the paper. And then the punch with the badge over the top. And that's plenty of embellishment for this one. And this is a design that you can take and add more to or you can pare it back even more and have it more minimal. So you can use this design no matter what your style and just move around the pieces until you find just the right spot for them. And uh, 
It's that simple to create and customize to your style. So this week, you may have already guessed that your challenge is to scrap yourself. So you can do so in any style. It can be a reflective page, a current page, a page about your childhood, anything um, that gets you scrapbooking something about your own life, your own memories. And um, if you check out the page at Two Peas in a Bucket, I've given some links to other things that are uh, useful in finishing pages like this and getting ideas on where to start on an album that's all about yourself. So I'd love for you to take part in the challenge and to stop by and have a look at those. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.